Welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Show, where we demystify the disease and empower you as the person with Parkinson's disease to reach your true potential. The content contained on this show is for informational purposes only and is not meant to be a replacement for information or advice that you receive from your in-person medical or therapy professionals. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And for an even more personalized experience, please ask us about our memberships. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. Hello, and welcome to What's Next Wednesday. Uh, my name is Dr. Michael. I'm a, uh, the host to the Parkinson's Disease Education YouTube and podcast. If you don't know me already, uh, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I've said that twice, sorry. Um, I'm just, I kind of got in here at the last second. I was like, ugh, gotta get my thing to get thought together. Um, so welcome to this video. This is an update video that we do every couple of weeks. And um, just to bring you an idea of what we're gonna be talking about in our upcoming uh, videos slash podcast. And uh, we have an important topic I wanna talk about and let you know that you know, what the upcoming video is gonna be about and podcast and that's going to be the topic of dopamine toxicity which you saw in the the um, title of the video of this video um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that briefly um, just kind of a highlight version of what that is and I also wanted to pull you especially if you're watching from YouTube um, live because I'm streaming on Facebook and YouTube at the moment um, I want to put a poll up during the uh, live stream just so that I can get an idea um, of of your concept, or I guess if you've heard this concept before, or this if you've heard these, this term before. Um, sorry if that's playing on both places. I'm gonna start the poll on YouTube now, just uh, for those of you watching live, please give me an answer on that. Um, if you've heard the term dopamine toxicity before. Also, I have a little goal in place. Um, if, if we get, um, a handful of super thanks or super chats. I'd love to do a private video, like a basically a one-to-one -one Zoom with you all just to talk about this a little bit more uh, before the upcoming video on Saturday, um, if possible. Or it might be the week after, we'll have to see. But um, one way or the other, I'll try to do it live um, and interactive so we can talk about it uh, because it is kind of an unusual topic. So first of all, I uh, wanted to go into what that is and why it's important. If you saw the video that we did recently, um, it looks like about 50-50 split for those of you who have answered so far say yes and no uh, that you've heard of this, this topic or this uh, concept. So go back and watch it if you haven't, but I did a video a couple weeks ago, a podcast about um, a new treatment that's coming down the road for Parkinson's disease. And um, I also did an interview with the person who's developing this treatment idea. So uh, that's a previous interview I did. So that was Dr. Bernstein and his um, drug, or it's not his drug, but the drug that he's uh, putting into clinical trials is called RB190. And it's essentially an older FDA approved drug that has been found to reduce dopamine in dopamine producing cells. And that sounds counterintuitive. That's why I wanna go into this today because there's a lot of, it was a it was hard video to digest because there was a lot of important, a lot of, there's a lot of complex ideas in that video, and it's complex for me too. So I, I'm not trying to say that it's hot, you know, <laughs> I'm above people. It's it's just it, it. I can explain it, but it is a, a lot to wrap your mind around because it's a completely new concept. And for me, it was a completely new concept just a couple months ago. So I understand, but bear with me. I that's why I'm doing this video that's coming up this weekend is I want to make sure. I try to explain this in as much detail as possible and be as straightforward with it as possible. For you all watching today, by the way, thank you for being here live. And um, let me know in the in the live chat if you're here and say hi. Please like the live stream. It's the only price of admission today. I appreciate that very much. Um, so, uh, so briefly, dopamine toxicity. So let's go back for a second. So when we treat Parkinson's disease now, basically the me method of treatment is we give people a medication that helps to increase the available dopamine the brain can use. So levodopa converts to dopamine in the brain. The levodopa that you take is a pill. Um, 
There's also other medications like dopamine agonists. They kind of act like dopamine by stimulating the, there are receptor cells in the brain that basically they receive chemicals. So they, they, they interact with them. The, the chemical that they receive starts an action, right? So in this case, dopamine receptors, they, they pair with dopamine. Once dopamine pairs with that receptor, that receptor activates more processes neurologically to happen. So that's called a, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It basically helps transmit signals between places in the brain in very specific ways. And every neurotransmitter in the brain has very specific jobs. Um, dopamine is responsible for movement, regulation, mood, and cognition. So among other things, but that's the those are the main three functions. Um, now, the the on the surface, just that that term dopamine toxicity almost doesn't make sense because you're thinking, well, wait a minute. I thought that there was a lack of dopamine production in Parkinson's. That is true. But the reason it's true is less clear on the surface, and that's why there's, a con there's some confusion with this. And, and I didn't even understand this before, and I'm still trying to understand it. Um, the, so in, a, in normal circumstances, um, we don't want to inhibit the function of the cells that, that are producing certain things, right? But in the case of Parkinson's, we're not talking about normal cells anymore. That's the key thing to remember. In Parkinson's disease, we have cells that are, for multiple reasons, not functioning right. The, the, the main cells affected by PD. And for, as a review, again, I've probably said this 100 times, but this is the first time you're watching, I'm going to say it. There's a very specific area of the brain where you have dopamine producing cells that are dying in Parkinson's. It's that the specifically, it's called the substantia nigra pars compacta, or it's an area called the striatum or the striatum, very small area in the midbrain. There are multiple areas in that part of the brain that produce dopamine, and they're all part of a grouping of cells called the basal ganglia. The substantia nigra cells are one group of basal ganglia cells. There are other basal ganglia cells. So there's multiple ones. We won't go into all those today. But um, those are, that's where the disease process lives. And that's, that's a majority of dopamine-producing neurons in our brain. So, um, so we know from looking at gen genetic studies and um, or basically studying the genes that are linked to Parkinson's and the anatomy and so forth that there are specific genes that are, that are linked to specific dysfunctions or problems in those dopamine-producing cells in the striatum or the substantia nigra. So one, we know that the mitochondria are not functional in the, as well. They're sick in those cells. There's a lot of mitochondria in every cell, but those mitochondria are not doing well. And for those of you who don't remember, mitochondria are basically a, a, an organelle, a, basically a part of that cell that helps cell functions. It helps cellular genetics. Um, it helps to control what that cell produces within itself and what it releases, all that thing it controls and and does a lot. Um, if those mitochondria aren't working well, you have less energy production for the cell itself because um, it produces ATP, but it also helps to to again helps the cell to produce pro proteins it needs and so forth. So it's not working as well. And one of the one of the problems you will have. Is, uh, is a misfolding of a normal protein called alpha-synuclein. And it misfolds and it clumps. So alpha-synuclein is found within those cells and also in peripheral nerve tissue and all the nerve tissue essentially eventually has alpha-synuclein. So that's an abnormal protein. It's been linked to Parkinson's. We all know about that. One of the things that's important to remember about alpha-synuclein is, is why it's a problem. It, it's a problem for the cell because it's not supposed to be there, but it also interferes with the cell that produce the cells that produce dopamine in the brain aren't able to release dopamine into um, or basically outside of the cell and be received by a receptor cell. So there's always um, the, the connections between nerves are called synapses. So anywhere you have a synapse, you have a synaptic bulb and a receptor cell on the other side, and then in between is a synaptic cleft. So you have to have a chemical go from one side into the synaptic cleft and then go to the other side. That's that's the basics of of a uh, 
of an action potential uh, resulting in chemical release and then that chemical is being used by something else. Alpha synuclein directly blocks the, uh, the ability of that cell, the, the dopamine producing cell, to release that dopamine to be used. So the dopamine is being retained within the synap synaptic bulb of that cell, of that neuron. Uh, at least a great deal of it is. It's releasing some, but it's not releasing all that it needs to release. That's where the, the, the topic or the key, I can't talk now, that's where the concept of dopamine toxicity comes in. Because dopamine, when it breaks down into its parts, like its chemical parts, that's toxic to the internal parts of the cell that, that produces dopamine. And then it becomes sick and it can die. And ultimately it will die. So the lack of dopamine production in Parkinson's is is yes, those cells are dying, but ironically, a huge part of the reason they're dying is because they're unable to get the dopamine they're producing out to be used. So I won't go into why that's important for treatment because that was talked about in the last video that we did, and that was that's, that was a whopper. So go back and watch it if you haven't already. But um, anyway. I wanted to go into this in more detail, um, maybe even a little more detail than I did today, and have it as a, a long-form video that I can do uh, to be released this weekend. That's my goal is to release it this weekend. Um, so that, that's it in a nutshell, and I wanted to make a couple of announcements about, um, well, I guess number one was the announcement that the, that's the plan for that video to be released this weekend. But number two, I just saw Dr. Bernstein on his LinkedIn posted that they found a manufacturer to start producing RB190 for the trials. So that's really good news because if you have a manufacturer, you can actually get, get bulk uh, amounts of product made so that they can use them in the clinical trials. So that phase 2A of the trial is set to begin this year. Hopefully by year's end, that's the number one goal that they have is to be able to start that trial by year's end. Um, RB190 helps dopamine toxicity. That's why it's important for this live stream to understand that connection. And that was the topic of the previous video we just did. So, um, yeah, that, that was, that was the main thing. So that there's a lot deep to unpack. So, um, I will do my best to make that succinct and to the point in the video that I do. And I'll try to use visuals as well. I'm going to get out Mr. Whiteboard, try to do some whiteboard drawing on there. Um, that seems to help, helps me to explain it a little bit better if I have a visual too. So um, that's, that's the plan. So I hope that you all will be able to come to see that this weekend. I'll make sure to, um, I mean, you should see a premiere pending if that video is going to be released Saturday, which that's my plan. Only complication is, I'm probably going to leave the state to go on a trip Friday afternoon, so I really need to get this up and running before the weekend. Um, but that's my number one goal, so I, I do hope that I accomplish that goal. Um, so it's, it looks like 71% of you, thank you for those of you answered the poll. 14 of you on YouTube said, or 14 of you answered, 71% said never heard of dopamine toxicity. 29% had. That either means you've watched the channel or you've heard of it in another place which is great i'm so glad um uh yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and conclude in a moment here but i just wanted to say um if you all have not heard of this before I, i've done a uh, there's a there's a class i've done called the parkinson's roadmap class it's a it, there's a an asynchronous version you can take on your own time uh, but I'm also doing, a, 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 I did a live version. I'm about to do another cohort of the live version that's going to start um, in April. Um, and I didn't, I neglected to put the link in the description, or I guess maybe the live stream was scheduled. I, it was too late to do it. So do me a favor, and if you're on Facebook, in the not in the live stream chat, but in the comments, put roadmap, and I'll send you a direct link. Um, maybe a direct message one way or the other to to look at the page for the course um 
and channel members of the course, uh, YouTube channel members are going to get a percentage off of that course, but um, there's also other purchase options too available on the on the live version especially. Um, but I think you'd really like it, um, and it basically is a great way to for me to explain a lot of these concepts of Parkinson's disease in short bits where you can kind of digest it and get to replay it later if you didn't understand it. <laughs> um, I shouldn't say understand it, but you know what I mean? You might might need to hear it more than once. Um, if you do the asynchronous version, it's available, of course, it's on there anytime you want it because you have lifetime access once you get it. But um, but on the live version too, there will be replays available as well. So um, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> and I, uh, sorry, I saw a couple comments here. So April said roadmap. Thank you. And De Marie says roadmap. And I don't know for sure if that was in the live stream chat or in the comment section. So just double check. If it's not in the comment section, uh, sometimes the live stream comments will disappear. So, um, but anyway, I'll make sure you get a copy of that if I can. So if you're on Facebook, I definitely will. But um, either that or I'll pin it as a comment down below after the live stream, and then everybody can access it if you want to look at it. So, <clears throat> But thank you for the comments. That helps. And I um, uh, hope you will be able to come to the premiere this weekend, and um, I'll do my best to get that out to you this weekend. If not, I'll make an announcement, and I'll set a date for it. Thanks so much for being here this afternoon. Look forward to it, and I appreciate you being here. Be empowered. Have a great afternoon.